Welcome to the King Song KS18L unboxing and range test. Right, well, these boxes do get taller and taller, so I'm gonna remove this from the table and uh, get out of the box, see what we got. And they get heavier and heavier. Right, you get your usual charge block, and with that you get a couple of fuses, or a fuse, or two, your manual, and a power cable. You are not supposed to remove the KS18L pulling up on its handle, its trolley handle, because the box is really, really tight, and obviously you're overexerting the trolley handle. And we started putting stickers in there to say, don't do that. Um, so, what you're supposed to do is slide it out, try and take some of the weight off the unit. Whoa. Oh no, I spilled my tea. Whew. Let's get on a stand. There it is. At the top, you've got the trolley handle with a push button. Push it in. You've got a midpoint and a high point. Push it in. In the dead center, don't push it off to the side, otherwise, apparently, all hell ensues. So there's that, put it in the center. Middle point, dot point. Two points of adjustment. And try and take that little tag off. Then we've got the power button, the USB ports, so there's two of them. Front light and you've got the side LED rings here. You've got the side pads, which are pretty thin, but wide, so they'll fit most leg patterns. And at the back end of it, we've got the sensor for the lights, because they automatically come on, which is pretty neat. And we've got the charge ports. Now, there's two, just like the USB, really, there's two of them. Now, it comes with one charger, but you can double up for twice as fast charging speeds. So if you want to buy another charger, they're on the website, but you, so you can actually half your charge time. Then we've got Another light, which acts as a brake light if you're going forward, but it can also act as a front light as well if you want to ride backwards. It'll light up behind you, which is pretty neat. So you've got the same light unit both sides. Then you've got this rubber mudguard, which is held on with two screws there. Really, really good. So there's a benefit of this, and I'll show you that in a minute. Foot plates, nice big wide foot plates with grips on them. You've got your speaker either side. So you've got two sets of speakers, and you've got uh, speakers this side as well. So both sides of them, both sides of the unit. So the advantage with this mudguard, rather than a solid mudguard, is if we take it off the stand here, just for a second, try to spill my tea, set that aside. When you lean this unit against your kitchen cabinet, uh, against your car wheel, you take it out. Very often you'll find that when a robot vacuum cleaner or a dog or a small child or you just put it up wrong and it's switched off it will fall down now with this when it falls down it's going to hit that rubber and it's not going to actually damage a protruding mudguard obviously if it falls forward it's just going to smash its face in but for backwards one side is protected and the mudguard isn't going to get damaged very flexible i like that it's a very simple solution so with the foot plates, there's no magnet in this. This is actually like a retaining spring system. It's a, it's a metal plate that's folded over with tension in it. And it's quite awkward to open and close, which has some advantages and disadvantages. So with the other units, you use magnets in the side, which is most other units. You can just flick it open with your foot. So when you're stood up, you need to bend down to open the foot plates up. With this you do, because you can. It's so tight that you can't do that. But at the same time, with the ones with the magnets, you can be carrying it and you can knock it and then actually knock the foot plate down and it smacks you in the shin. So, yeah, I prefer the magnet one, but I have appreciated sometimes not getting smacked in the shin at the same time. So, that works well. This pad here and a little pad on here protects damage to the side of the unit from the grip tape, which is quite a nice little touch. Let's boot her up. There we go. So when you first boot up your King Song, as of date of recording, they're in a lock mode. And there's a sticker on them, should be a sticker on them, if there isn't, it's in lock mode when it's beeping like this. So you've got no stabilization, and it's telling you, oh, you're gonna unlock me before you can use me. And so you need the application to be able to do that. So download the King Song app. Download the King Song app, and when you download it, you will see, and I'll try and do an overlay now, of where the unlock button is. There's also, if you go to our blog on our website, speedyfeet.co.uk, go to blogs there and go to probably news or it's probably help and advice or something along those lines. In there, it tells you the process of how to unlock your King Song machine. Now, that is for transportation. So, if this button 
gets pressed in during transport, if that isn't enabled, then what can happen is the wheel can boot up, and then as the package is turned around, it can spin. And then it eats all the packaging inside, it gets really hungry, eats it all, and then wrecks your wheel usually, so it'll burn the motor out, or burn the board out, sorry. Uh, so yeah, that's what that's for, so don't be surprised when it does that. So what I'll do is I'll go and unlock it, so we can have a bit of peace. Probably worth noting, when you do unlock your wheel, you don't want it on a stand. If you bought a stand, don't put it on the stand, turn it on, unlock it. Because obviously at that point, it's going to try and stabilise once you unlock it, and it's going to spin out. Another bit of advice, if you're brand new to wheels, is if it does that, don't try and settle it back down again on the floor because you put a burn mark in your carpet. Just let it spin out, eventually it'll stop. Let's have a sip of tea. Mm. Lovely. So no balance, and now all one-handed. So you go to device, and you say search, and then connect. It says connect. Then you click unlock. You can do permanent unlock, which is probably what you want to do. We do one-time unlock, because we update the firmware usually before dispatch. So I'll do one-time lock here. And now that is stabilised, you see what kicked in there. No more beeping, it's all good. You've got lights here, as you can see, front and backwards, you can kind of see it hitting the wall there. So falling backwards, that's pretty neat, isn't it? And I can't show you, if it's daylight, I could show you, but that actually comes on automatically. And then press and hold to boot down. So no stabilisation. Now you can put it on the stand. When you set it down, you can boot it up. So you want to hear it spin? And it will also show you they decelerate, so you wouldn't want to be going this speed, but this will what happened if you went too fast. Please decelerate. Please decelerate. Please decelerate. Say, don't Please decelerate. Please decelerate. Don't put it back down when it's spinning. So, let's go and weigh this device. But before we do that, let's put it on charge. When the light from the charging block goes from red to green, just remove the cable and make sure you put the flat back down, doesn't let any water in there. The weight of the KS18 L1036 watt hour is 22.37 kilograms. Okay, we're going to take it out of the city now to see how it does through pedestrian areas, on the roads, down some steps and all sorts of things. Uh, see how manoeuvrable it is. Big 18 inch wheel in the middle of the city, is it going to be any good? And how does the trolley handle work? How does it operate? At the moment, it's been working fine. So, uh, yeah, let's take it out. We've done the city riding, which I'll summarise later, and now we need to head off and do some off-road riding. See this 18 inch tyre works off-road. I've got my kit, my survival kit, my dog, in case I need to be pulled back. Let's see how she performs. Okay, well I'm at 53 kilometers, and I'm getting, please decelerate. Um, and also your battery is low, please recharge your vehicle, I think is the error message. Um, so I'll show you the app now to show you what it's on. And obviously standing still uh, is a lot higher battery readout than when you're pushing forward on it. But I'll show you nonetheless. Here we are, um, and actually, is not very robust this app it keeps disconnecting so go there search there it is 
connect again. Okay, and there you can see 17% when I'm stood still. When I push it forward, or well, 15 stood still. When I push it forward, that goes down from sort of 10 to naught sometimes. Distance traveled, 53 kilometers. So um, yeah, I'll try and show you when I've been pushing it along. Show you what happens if it focuses. Such a small little thing on the screen, I can't get it to focus. But anyway, it's basically down to, you need to get it charged up. The KS18L with me on it has done 32 miles. I was kind of hoping it'd be a 40 mile machine, but 32. Now you might be able to squeeze another, another one mile out of it, two miles. So you might hit 34 miles, um, but I'm not convinced that's all it's got to give. So what I'm gonna do is gonna recharge it up to 100% and set off again and do it in one single ride. I'll track the ride with Map My Ride, an app, and see exactly what it's doing in terms of elevation as well, all being well. Um, I think it shows that climb and descent. But anyway, even if it doesn't, it will show the mileage of a second test run. Now, don't you should do that, because the range tests take a long time to do, but we need to do something, because that seems a little bit low, 32. So I'm gonna do it again, give it a second cycle through the batteries and give it a second chance. I mean, we're filming in fairly good temperatures, so 21 to 16 degrees C, so it's pretty good. Please decelerate, please decelerate. Wow, so that's tipped me all the way up. So that's what happens when the battery runs out. Um, I was saying another mile I'll be able to do, or two, that's wrong. I've done about 0.3 of a mile more. Um, so yeah, completely tilted back. Um, let's just turn it off. I want to show you really what the low battery sound sounds like. Your device is low battery. Please charge it. Well, at least you know what it sounds like now when you've got a low battery and when you need to decelerate. <laughs> so let's get it on charge and see if we can get a little bit more out of this on a second cycle. If it comes up with the same, then that's the answer. But I would expect it to do 40 miles, really. That's what I was expecting, but I could just be wrong. Let's see if we can do it. And to do this, I'm gonna utilize the two charge ports. So twice as fast charging. Right, well I've come out again to do the second test ride. Um, I should probably explain why I'm armoured up. I've got knee pads on, I've got the elbows, I've got shoulders, everything. Knees and toes, absolutely everything. And the reason for that is when it was low battery last time, fairly low battery, I was coming down a hill, I was probably doing about 18, and it tipped forward ever so slightly, and I thought the wheel was cutting out, so I leant back, but it was okay. It sort of carried on, and I haven't had the problem since. But that put a seed of doubt in my mind, so, on this second test, because of that, I don't really want to injure myself and be out of work for uh, months on end. I've kept myself up fully, and I'm uh, just going to go and hit it hard now and see what mileage I get out of this. This time round, I'm using Map My Ride to do the range test. First time was with the app. I've done 18 miles, and I've hit 30% battery, and where it said, please decelerate, real sharp. Took me by surprise. Uh, it's pretty sudden, that. It's not a slight tail. It's like from that, you, st you stood on it. And it goes, three, please, decelerate. So, whoa. but anyway, 30%, 18 miles. So uh, we'll see what she's got left. But my speed is now obviously slightly restricted. Okay, so we're just going to try now how many attempts are successful for coming upstairs. So you ride in, go to pick it up. So if you're on the tube or whatever, you arrive, pick it up for attempt number one. So I'm here, I've ridden in. That's a fail. Please decelerate. Please decelerate. Not a great start. Please decelerate. So, I'm going to try it ten times.
As you can see there, that was an accuracy of four out of 10, which isn't that great. So if you're coming up to some steps, elevator, whatnot, um, and it does that, and you've got a crowd of people behind you trying to push on through, that would be quite frustrating, I feel. Um, it's a shame because it kind of detracts from the wheel itself, but they could do with improving that, for sure. Right, is that shot done? No. Nope. Oh, yes, sweet, let's go. With that journey I've just done, it's 25.4 miles, which is a little bit strange because that's even less than we got the first time round. So we're gonna have a quick look later, after I just go through this, of what that might be. Now, it's pretty unusual, I actually use the app to measure the distance on the first ride out, as in the King Song app, and I use Map My Ride on this ride out. So there's discrepancy between the two, which needs resolving <laughs> quite drastically. Either the King Song app is wildly wrong in its estimation of how far you've gone, or Map My Ride's wrong. I'm gonna side with Map My Ride, to be honest, because it's a massive app that tens of thousands of people, might even be hundreds of thousands of people use in the cycling world to monitor workouts, etc. And it's used tirelessly to monitor all that. So I'm assuming that's right and the cheap King Song app isn't. Now because it was such a massive difference, you've got to question whether it was the King Song app, whether it's Map My Ride or not. So what we're going to do is take the car for a one mile journey and measure it with Map My Ride at the same time. If Map My Ride says one mile and the car says one mile, then the King Song app is measuring incorrectly for the 18L. Um, so we're going to go and test that now because we're scientific like that. So that's what we're going to do. Right, so that's exactly a mile. So Map My Ride is accurate. It's exactly the same as the car. And we assume that the car is correct, as I say. It's bound to be, isn't it? Um, so now the only last test to do really is to test Map My Ride against the King Song app and see if they match, which I don't believe they will. And that's why we got a higher readout on the first test ride than we did on the second. So I'll test that now. I've come out to test the King Song app versus Map My Ride. We know Map My Ride is exactly accurate. I'm going to test the King Song app now against that. I've stopped exactly. 146 kilometers. So I waited from 145, waiting until it's changed. So I've just literally stopped. I've turned this off and turned it back on again. So the total mileage, current mileage is zero. And it's 146 kilometers in total. So we'll go from there and just measure a mile with Map My Ride, stop and see how many kilometers it says. So as you can see from the overlays here, the King Song app is over calculating by almost 0.3 of a kilometer every mile. So that proves that one anyway, which is all, well, it's all good because we've worked out what's going on. So uh, yeah, whether it's different per wheel, I have no idea, but it's definitely a discrepancy there. And that's why the high readout on the first ride when I'm riding the wheel, it is actually on 0%, but when you stand still, the app reads out at about 20%. So it's the same with a lot of wheels, really, when you actually put pressure on the battery on, and through the app, it drops and shows you a lower percentage. So if you're standing still, because I've got 20% left, you might think, oh, you can go another five miles. It's not actually the case. When you stand on it, it's naught, and you do get the tilt back. It actually pushes you back. Something about the tilt back as well. At the low battery, it is very sharp tilt back. It's it really surprises you, takes you by surprise. Fine, as long as you know, it's if you don't know it, surprise you. If you know it's gonna be a sharp tilt back at low, um, low battery, then you're prepared for it. 
The good news is there doesn't seem to be an issue with the wheel in terms of the dip forward. That is to do with the low battery. But the reason it felt so strange initially was because what was happening was grit was capturing over the wheel, going up and around and going through the body of the wheel and scraping the casing. That seems to be what it is. So it hasn't done it on tarmac, it's only done, ever done it off-road. And it seems to be, as, as wheel and stones and grit get caught in there, it's actually rubbing the side of the case in it. And it's just coincidence it happened at the same time as the tilt. So you have the tilt forward and vibration running through the unit slightly, which makes you feel quite uneasy. But that, this, this second ride out, I've had no issues at all. It's been, it rode fine. The only discrepancy is the mileage it can do. So fairly, fairly low-ish mileage, the 25, which is probably about right for a, just over a thousand watt hour machine. It's probably what you'd expect. So up on the screen now, you've got the battery readout uh, when I was riding it, and then here's a shot now of the battery readout when it stood still. And as you can see, it reads about 20%. It isn't really 20%, so just keep that in mind. The other thing you will also see is the remaining mileage. It gives a huge readout for what's remaining, and that obviously isn't possible, because as soon as you stand on it and lean forward, it drops down to 0% battery remaining. And some overlays now of the actual ride I did. So here's the actual route around. You can see where I've gone. That is the route that I did for this test. All in one go, gave it no space in between. It was done, got on the machine, rode it until I ran it out essentially to give it the best chance possible. I was expecting a higher mileage out of it. I'm not sure why, because it's a 1036 watt hour machine. It seems to be about right, but the promises made by Kingsong or the advertising material made by Kingsong was a lot higher mileage considerably more. I think they said 120 kilometers or something it would do, which is just, it's just nonsense. It's just way over the mark. So could be wrong, could be 90, but it's nothing like that. So it's, you know, you're talking a 25 mile machine. The Kingsong app seems to be out to that degree, but we're saying we'd, do, we'd run through that in a bit. I put in the elevation gains and losses through that as well. And then you can see my speeds, average speeds and everything like that. So that's the entire journey. And you're talking about in doing this in temperatures of around about 16, 17 degrees Celsius approximately. They give it a best chance, that is the sort of mileage you're gonna get. So you're looking really, I would have said, you're probably looking at a minimum of 25 miles. So unless you're a lot more heavy than me, then it's gonna be minimum 25. If you went slower and on a flatter route, your mileage is only gonna go up. So if you're lighter, you go slower, and you're on a flatter route, you're gonna get more. But this is gonna be a minimum, 25 miles. I'm about 85 to 86 kilograms, something like that. Um, so. Bear that in mind, and if you're carrying a backpack and things like that, obviously you're gonna start reducing it. The tire pressure was left at 40, which is what's required on the tire sidewall. So it's given it the best chance. Don't usually do two range tests, it's usually the one, because it, it does take a long time to do it. It took me at least a couple of hours out of the day to try and actually get the range test done. So did it again to give it the best chance possible. And it is 25, which is really is in line with what you expect. 1,000 watt hours, you're looking at about 25 mile machine. Should be, should be around about that given us no issues at all apart from the harsh, the only comment really is the harsh tilt back at low batteries and tilt forward. So those two things, they could be a little bit, they could introduce themselves in a slightly calmer manner, let's say. But let's say, once you do know, it is easier to cope with knowing that, that whoa, that isn't a failure, that is actually the legitimate thing. But it could, you could potentially hop off it and have an accident if you're brand new to wheels. So if you're used to wheels, but at the second time, it's also problematic if you're used to wheels. So, like we've ridden almost every single machine out there, this is the harshest tilt back we've ever had, and you've just got to keep that in mind. So when it first happened to me, I was like, "What is going on?" Prepared for it because it lent, you know, lent back, slowed it down, but it's harsh. Keep that in mind. Well, it probably could be changed from a firmware update at some point anyway. So all these things can be updated with firmware over time. Well, that's the city riding done and the off-road riding done. To summarize the experience really of riding this machine, what is it like, how does it handle? So in the city, although it's quite a big machine, it's nice and high up on your legs so you can actually control it and keep it tight going along. It's not loose and all over the place and uncontrollable, so it's really controllable. The foot plates, nice large grippy foot plates, not gonna be a problem in the rain. There's gonna be no issues there basically. So control wise, it's very controllable. And obviously it's quite a big wheel, so you're talking an 18 inch wheel, it is a big machine, 18 inch does sit high um, in your, on your legs and on the road as well. So it's less controllable obviously than like a smaller machine, a 16 inch or a 14 inch for sure. But that's what you'd expect, so you get a thousand watt hour battery in there, just over a thousand thirty six. You've got the 
The mud guard there, so when it's rain, but also dust, it tries to keep the dust off as possibly best it can. If you have muddy puddles and stuff like that, after some rain, it's just gonna keep your back from getting splattered. So that's, that's quite nice, quite like that. That works well. The lighting system works well, so front light coming on, the auto detect when it's dark, that's a brilliant little feature. The uh, side pads are, are soft enough, they're not exactly massively thick. Again, it's conditioning, so if you're new to riding wheels, expect that. The alarm sounds are very loud, so that you can hear quite easily if you're wearing a helmet or anything like that. You should be able to hear that even though your ears are covered, so that's all good. The acceleration, the braking, that's all on par with what you expect from an 18-inch wheel. The firmware seems good, robust. We've had a couple of firmware updates in a short space of time. So we've been updating and had no issues so far. The app could do with definitely a massive overhaul and bring it up to date. That is lacking hugely. But you know, you can connect to it, you can unlock it. That's pretty much what you can do with it. I wouldn't trust it for much more else than that and doing the firmware upgrade, so it, that's good. There are other apps out there that are better than that, put it that way. The tire handles well on-road and off-road, no issues there. It grips well in corners on the trails. It captures when it's brand new, it's capturing stones and throwing them up, which you'd expect because it's quite sticky when they come out of the box. So that's now worn down, that's much less of a problem now. It just grips fine on the road, it's not noisy. It's good, it actually handles really, really well. It got dust up here, so it goes up quite high, the dust. But, you know, what can you expect? It's only on the back end, so the front's all good, the back uh, fairly dusty. The mudguard does the best it possibly can to try and keep that down. You've got some dust along the side here, which does get on your trousers slightly if it's really dusty and if you're doing some speed. This is a way you really do need to wear your full protection kit on really. If you're going at anything speed above you can run at. It's the same always, I always say it. if you're going above a speed you can actually run at from standing still. You need to be wearing fully kitted out. You need your wrist guards, knee guards, elbows and a helmet for sure. Full face ideally. The speeds these wheels now are going, it's not something you just jump on and just expect everything to be absolutely daisy and be fine. You need to kit up for it if you're going out and you're going to be travelling at speeds. If you came at a speed that's lower, that's fine. Just take it steady. It's a strong motor, so you can feel the strength of it as it's accelerating forward. Braking's all good, there's no lacking there in the braking. So from that point of view, it's been good. The hills we've taken it up of all is coped with them all absolutely fine. I've had no issues there at all. The second video is a part two when we do the 250 kilometer update. We'll obviously update you on how I'm doing with it, but also we'll probably talk about more in depth how we're finding it day to day and if we come across any other issues with climbing or anything. Um, most wheels we do come back to. You can usually tell on the first ride how it's going to go and I don't think we can have any, any issues with that going forward. But obviously we'll update you on the 250 kilometer one and we'll do some more shots of it going up some steep hills probably and things like that. If you're really looking for a city wheel, then the bigger wheels are going to be more problematic. So the bigger you go, the more more tight confined space you've got to work in. You want a smaller diameter wheel. This does work, so 18 inches up the limit there, really, with what's easily workable. All wheels can do pretty much anything, unless you're talking a very cheap generic wheel. So a 22 inch wheel is going to be more work to ride in a city than it is out on the open trails. It's just that's the way it is. It's rideable in a city, not a problem. The Gotway Monster, um, but. At the same time, it's more work. The 18 inch sits quite nicely in an area where you've still got that power, the bigger motors, the higher speed, and the stability that it brings. So, the, the extra weight of a bigger wheel sits on the road quite nicely. You're not getting shoved all over the place. So, it's that's a thumbs up. Double charging ports, really, really good idea having two ports on there. We did it for a thousand mile when we drilled into the side of the case and then put extra ports in. So, we're going to charge it twice the speed, is brilliant. So you have to obviously purchase that charger, but it comes with one, but you can buy it with two. And then you half your charging time, so that's neat. So if you're looking for a machine that's around about the 25 mile mark at worst, up to 30, then this is the machine for you. If you want to be doing 45, 50 miles, you are limiting yourself to the bigger wheels, the Gotway, you know, the 2400 watt hour machines, that sort of area. But for a thousand watt hour machine, it's performing very well so far. We'll update you when we do the 250 kilometer video to how it's all going on. And we'll do some more close-up shots, tell you what's wearing, what isn't, and how it's performing.